All new Star Wars Rogue One figures and vehicles. Help the Rebels escape the Empire. Call in the Death Troopers! Summon the U-Wing and set for attack mode. <gasps> new Rogue One figures and vehicles, each sold separately. Discover your Star Wars adventure. everybody and welcome once again to Geekfest Rants. My name is Carlos Perone and joining me today I have Kyle Perone. Say hi Kyle. Hi Kyle. Well today we are going to be covering what we do usually every year around this time, February. Toy Fair. New York Toy Fair is unleashing, I assume, the really the first wave I guess of pictures and material having to do with what's coming this year. Big deal this year for collectors. It's the 40th anniversary of Star Wars and Hasbro is taking advantage of that and trying to merchandise certain items to coincide with the 40th anniversary. We obviously couldn't make Toy Fair like we have. I mean, we've been to a few, but now we're in Florida, it's even more difficult to make Toy Fair. And even in the past, if you guys remember, trying to get a look at Hasbro stuff sometimes in the past was a little difficult because you had to go to a different location. So it is much easier to just wait out the weekend Start gathering all your information from all your different toy news sources, especially Star Wars news sources, on the internet. Look at the pictures. Look at the videos. People are posting stuff live. Panels are happening live. You know, all types of information. And, you know, because our main focus here is Star Wars, uh, let's take a look at what they are putting out this year. Like I mentioned earlier, it is a 40th anniversary theme that we're dealing with. And the big product, I guess, that they're pushing, their big flagship product, is the early bird set. Now, if you guys remember, because we talked about the early bird set many times, the original early bird set from Kenner, which was you spend a few bucks and they give you a, a little box with a little display thing. And in a couple of months, when the figures would come out, you would actually receive the figure. So you would kind of be on hold, waiting for these things to come out. And that is the infamous early bird set, which they've done a repackaging uh, not too long ago. Maybe, I don't know, maybe somewhere in the early 2000s, where they repackaged and reprinted, I guess, the cardboard portion of the early bird set. Obviously, they weren't going to give you any free figures in the process. And that was a cool little kind of like an anniversary type of deal thing. What they're doing this time around, and we've both looked at the pictures, is they're giving you a cardboard display package, which is pretty large, and they're giving you a figure, one figure to go along with it. The big deal is that we're dealing now with six inch figures. This is the black line, the line that was introduced a couple of years ago that I have a feeling that little by little is gonna overtake the three and three quarter inch line. What you get here is the, like I said, the package, where you can put your figures once they're displayed, and a Darth Vader figure. The Darth Vader figure, again, because this is a six inch, uh, we're used to seeing the six inch figures in these black boxes because it's the black, you know, the black line, and they come in these black boxes. They're expensive. They're around anywhere from uh, seventeen dollars to twenty five dollars, depending on where you buy them. So you you could say that the average about twenty bucks a pop. But here you're getting it for $40, one figure and the display box, just to kind of get the ball rolling on this. The rest of the figures you are going to buy as they start coming out, and I believe Hasbro is already taking pre-orders for at least the first wave of figures. Those figures are going to cost you about 20 bucks a pop. When you're all done paying for this, we kind of calculated, it's going to cost you about $260 if you want the entire 12 back set of early bird figures. Figures. Now keep in mind that the early bird set only came with four figures originally because that's what you paid for. You paid for that box display and then they mail you these four figures that would come in a little box. It was up to you then to continue your collection, you know, to entice you to keep buying them. Here with the box, you're only getting one figure. The rest it's up to you to get. Now, what's the big deal about this? Visually, obviously, the six inch figures are they're gorgeous. They're super you know, articulated, they look great. They're able to do so much more detail, so much many more accessories, but you are paying for that. The big deal here is that what they're doing is that instead of giving you these boxed figures that already exist right now, they're recarded them. They're gonna put them on cards, large size cards, and the cards will resemble the original 1977, 1978 cards. So that's what 
makes this, I guess, special and vintagey is not only because they're slapping the early bird set label on it, is that you're getting these figures on these super cool looking cards. Now, Kyle, you've seen some of these pictures. What do you think? Yeah, they're they look like really, really like well done. I, I just miss the three and three quarter inch figures with articulation. <laughs> That's just, I, I don't want to get them because they're just too expensive. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I'm, I can't put $260 on this. They do look gorgeous, you know, no way around it. Now, here's the, the funny part. The ironic part is that if you're a real collector, <laughs> you're going to need two sets because if you want to open them and display them in the cardboard, you know, layout that comes out, you can't just put the carded figures in front of that. You got to put just the figures standing yeah, there like you used to. So... You would have to get one for display and then one for collect, you know, one for to keep it in the card because the, yeah. that's the whole point of these new cards is that they're carding them like the original. So that's what really makes these figures special. Because if you really think about it, if you already own some of these figures, guess what? Just buy the, the display box and put your figures in front of them and then you're done. Now, one thing that I believe is different in at least one of those figures i don't know if they're going to do anything about the rest of them is that the leia figure i'm told from what i've been reading they are either resculpting or repainting or doing something to make her look a little better than what i guess the first generation of six inch leias look like they are saying that they, they from the pictures you know they, they look gorgeous it's a gorgeous looking figure and they're making a point to make everybody know that i couldn't tell you if they are coming with any extra accessories or anything like that from what i've seen they look pretty much the same as all the other six inch figures that they've already put out, it's just that they're repackaging them. Speaking of six inch figures, with Celebration Orlando coming up in, uh, oh my God, I can't believe, only two more months, probably less than two months. Wow, less than two months. They are going to have an exclusive for the 40th anniversary. And what they're doing is they're taking, again, the already existing, from what I've seen, the already existing Luke in the X Wing pilot six inch figure, and they're recarding him in an original Kenner 77, 78 type of looking card where you see Luke climbing the X-Wing from the, you know, a profile. Uh, so I guess that makes it kind of vintage anniversary type of thing. He does have, looks like pretty much the same accessories as the original one came in. Uh, maybe the lightsaber, it looks different. Maybe the, this one is a ignited lightsaber as opposed to the closed lightsaber. But that is what you are paying for. In all reality, in all these anniversary type of things, you are paying for the card. You're paying for the nostalgic, vintage looking card that comes with these figures. So again, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's just really too high for my <laughs> budget. Like you're not as disappointed with Hasbro with these things, but I'm like super disappointed because I still just want three and three quarter inch for everything like i'm sick and tired of all these new things even though they look great it's just they're just so expensive well it's funny because we've been looking at this for a while and we are kind of dreading the possibility that three and three quarter might be going away in in some shape or form because people seem to like the six inch format better and what they've done recently and it seems to be becoming more and more prominent is that they've replaced, they've started to replace the very super articulated figures they used to put out in three and three quarter inch and substitute them with the five point of articulation ones. Basically, no elbows, no knees, no wrists, no feet, you know, that kind of articulation that you're used to. Yeah. And they, they're slowly kind of doing that. Now, I personally don't care that much because I don't open my figures anymore. I keep them in the bubble, in the card. So I don't go around articulating them. So that's okay with me. But it is a kind of like a cheap out. And I remember originally they, they used to tell us, oh, well, you know what? We're just introducing these five points of articulation figures because, uh, you know, the kids, you know, they can't afford the, the toys are too expensive. And, you know, this way they can get more for the price, a bigger bang but, for the but buck. But isn't it like the same price anyway? Well, that's the point that little by little, they've been hiking up the price a little more, a little more, a little more. And now what used to be the attraction of the five point of articulation price point of i think it was like five bucks was supposed to be the the, the five point articulation was 5.99 or something like that now they're not even 5.99 anymore they're like seven eight bucks a piece 
And that's when they don't hit you with the, oh, wait a minute, this one's a two-pack. Oh, okay, a two-pack, obviously you got to pay more. Or this one comes with a special gun that combines with something else, and then they hike the price. I remember they did that for Force Awakens. They would yeah. have the same character as a single figure, and then as a single figure with a couple of extra accessories, and the price would just skyrocket. And then later, they introduced the three and three quarter black series, which is basically a three and three quarter figure with no card. It is in a black box, almost like a miniature box of what we have with the six inch black box. And they're charging $12 for that. And I'm like, let me get this straight. You are charging almost double, actually more than double what the figure is worth because it comes in a tiny little black box. To me, that is completely unacceptable because I like the art. I like the art that they use on a card. I mean, some of them I don't like, but that is a big draw for me. If you give me something in a black box or a black, you know, sterile container, to me, it's worth less. But I guess if you print with silver foil and gold edging and you put it over black, it makes it super high quality something to some people. I don't get it. Not for me. That's why I obviously I can't collect these things. They're way too expensive. You know, so I stick to my old kind of old school type of figures. Now, there are going to be a series of, if you are into the six inch, and we're going to talk about them later a little more, but th- they are going to put out some exclusives as just like they used to with three and three quarter. I remember they used to do these presentations and you, you would, they would do these slideshows and you would see, here's the Walmart exclusive. Here's the Toys R Us exclusive. Here's the GameStop. Well, they're doing the same thing now, but now the exclusives are not three and three quarters. They're six inch figures now. There's a Black Series ATACT driver, I think from Rogue One. Yeah, I think so. He's going to be the Target exclusive this year. Yeah, he's the all, all white with the red logo on the top. Right. It's a yeah. little difficult for me to... to we, we, we don't even see them in the movie. Like they're just like, they're supposed to be there, but I we, don't know. we never it, even it, see it's them. Hard to, it's hard to keep up with some of these variants. But there is a apparently a three and three quarter inch repack that they're doing as a four pack. And I guess it's because I think some people were complaining they didn't have enough variations or or they didn't stock enough of these. So what you're going to get as part of a Walmart exclusive is a Panda Baba, which again, that's one of the ones that people were complaining about. The concept, the prototype Boba Fett, the white one, remember that was was also one of these mail away specials. They're going to throw that in there as Sand Trooper and a Tusken Raider. This is again, Walmart exclusive, like the old days where they give you the Walmart exclusive and it is three and three quarters. So this is rare that we are getting that these days, because like I said, most of the exclusives now are going to be six inch. Speaking of six inch, GameStop is going to get an R5D4 in a six inch version. And I believe it's coming in the old package. So it is kind of like the early bird set looking, you know, the 40th anniversary packaging with the big card, instead of throwing him in a black box, they are doing that. And I guess in a way, you can kind of see that as part of, between the R5-D4 and the X-Wing Luke, that's part of your second wave. If you listen to our earlier shows about the different Kenner waves, the 12 backs, and then what followed the 12 backs was the second wave, which included the the Cantina creatures, Luke X-Wing, uh, you know, all these other droids, secondary droids. That's what they're giving you already. They're giving you a preview, I guess, of a second wave of repackaging. Now, how crazy are they going to go with repackaging six-inch figures? I mean, have we gotten to that point already where they're reselling us the same figure in a different package? Gee, what, a, what an unusual concept that is, huh? You, <laughs> that's all they ever do. The other line that also, that is not necessarily the Kenner line, it's a Lego line. And this is a line that we dip into sometimes. I don't go as crazy as sometimes some of our other members do. But what they've been putting out lately, aside from your regular Lego, is what they're calling the buildable figure line, which to me, it's the old Bionicles. If you remember the Bionicles, where you could pose them, joints in the knees and that sort of thing, very robotic looking figures when you, when you put them all together. The last one I got was K2SO, which... It's perfect for that figure because I've been looking for a cheap 12-inch version to put with the rest of my droids, and they never sold one unless you bought this Target like seven or eight pack, which is very expensive. Yeah. And and the K2SO is the exclusive one I think that comes with that. It's like, and they at least so far they haven't put them out. But anyway, I ended up getting one in this buildable figure line because it kind of fits the mold, and because he's a robot, he is supposed to look very skinny and very kind of frail looking and very articulated looking and it, it kind of fits pretty cool they are putting out a couple more and they i guess this, this it must be a successful line because they keep going with them we're getting four new ones a scarif trooper bays chirrut a stormtrooper commando which is really a sand trooper you know with the pauldron 
and a scout trooper with a bike. Now, this is different because this is the first time, I think, that they are expanding with an actual vehicle for that launch. Yeah, they've done it with Bionicle before a couple times. They've done vehicles? Yeah, for Bionicle. But this is the first time they're doing it in this line with the, right. the Star Wars. And these figures are normally like, their suggested price at Toy Fair is twenty four ninety nine a piece. The Scout Trooper is going to be fifty four ninety nine. Yeah, so it's, it's basically a two pack. <laughs> you're getting it's the equivalent of two figures, really. That's what they're charging you, which I think it's a little too much. I don't think it should be charging you double. Yeah, well, the Star Wars line with Lego, they charge you more simply because it's Star Wars, which is I think is insane. The other thing about these lines is that sometimes, not always, these show up on the discount rack at Walgreens. I've been able to find a number of these buildable figures like right now there's a couple i believe the death trooper i think is like i think they have it down to 12 dollars. Hmm. so i would suggest if you're ever looking for a bargain with these buildable figures if that's what you're into take a look at walgreen because they're overpriced everything is usually overpriced there under normal circumstances but when they throw them on clearance they're really good clearance it's these prices you don't even see them you know at any other store that, I, that, that discounts anything so while we're in the subject of Lego, this is one that Kyle, I know he loves the Lego stuff. I love Lego stuff, but I, I because they're, again, they're so expensive, I kind of stay with the smaller things. I mean, I wanted to get a, uh, a ghost when it first came out, and I wasn't able to because it was too expensive. I ended up getting the micro version of the ghost later on. You, know, you might be able to get it on, on eBay. Like they, they sell the set without the figures. You could probably get it for like maybe like 40, 50 bucks. Yeah, that's still a lot of money for Because the original set was like over, it was 100 bucks. Yeah, I know, right? And then every now and then you have like the Black Friday sales or yeah. you know, the, end, the, the end of the year sales, stuff like that. But you know what? Whatever. Anyway, this time around, Lego is pushing. Now, I keep saying this time around or, or now what's coming this year. Let's keep in mind, and I, I always tell you guys the same speech. This is New York Toy Fair. This is February. All these companies have a lot of product. And some of these bigger companies like to spread out their product throughout the year. Everything doesn't just come out in one day for the year and then everybody goes back to their company and then they come out the next year with product. No, no. They spread out the product throughout the year so they unveil their product throughout the year. Toy Fair is their first unveiling for the year. The next one is, especially now, since we have one almost every year, is Celebration. Now, I'm talking about Star Wars here, folks, because Celebration is a Star Wars only event. So we are going to possibly see some more stuff during Celebration. Not as much as we did on Toy Fair, but we are going to see something on Celebration probably a little more. Toy Fair is an international event that encompasses all the toy companies, conceivable companies out there that are in the market and, you know, startups and all types of small companies, big companies. So they do have to push, you know, I would say maybe at least 50% of their product has to be unleashed or unveiled during Toy Fair. But for us, for those of us who collect Star Wars, we are going to see a second wave, a minor second wave of toys being presented during Celebration. And then further down the year, like two months later, during Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con, that's when we also see that other wave of toys. By the time we're done with Comic-Con, the next big thing is Christmas, the Christmas season. And that's when they start going berserk with not so much presenting. There's nothing left to present. Now we're in the middle. There's the final push of the year of pushing your product. So now it's a matter of just pushing out all that product you've been promising people you know, during the year. The other thing also is that while Toy Fair is going on in New York, Toy Fair is an international event that takes place, I believe, also in Germany and yeah, in London. There's going to be more... Right. Sometimes yeah. stuff leaks in one country before the other. But this during this period, the January, February kind of period, is when we get the Toy Fair push. So even though right now we are seeing a lot of stuff, there is a good chance we might see some more stuff. Just like right now, to me, it looks like the six inch line is overtaking everything. They might have some more stuff to give us during the year to show us that's coming for the people who like to collect three and three quarters. I still think that they are seriously looking into kind of phasing out the three and three quarters, but we'll see. Maybe they'll show us more stuff. And I do have more that I'm going to talk about, but let's go back to Lego, which is where we left off. Uh, one of the big sets, probably the biggest of them all right now, I think it's going to be the Rantar Escape. Well, yeah, that's the biggest one that they've displayed price -wise. so far. Yeah. 
because uh, we're going to have a bunch that comes out in March, but they haven't really shown too much of the March stuff because they already right. already showed it. But the, yeah, the Rathtar escape set looks like it's going to be the most expensive. Now, you mentioned something by looking at it. Obviously, this is the uh, this is Force Awakens, and this is uh, inside that hauler where the Rathtars are being kept, that they, they get loose and they start running through the hallways. That's basically what they built is yeah. a set of hallways and maybe a containment area or something where you can have them running around and yeah, and with there's the, the Seguavian Death Gang in there. right, all those guys running around that sort of thing. But you mentioned that to you, they looks like it could be attachable to something else. Yeah, like they've done this before in other sets where there's like you can see like some connecting pieces that are just sticking out of the side. Either what they want you to do is either buy another one so that you can have a third Raftar so that you can have all three, even though it comes with, <laughs> you'd have four total. This is $79. This is expensive yeah. to yeah. begin with. And then on top of that, um, either it's either that or another set that they're going to release later down the line that will be able to connect with it, which what? I can't think of anything. I mean, what would, do you want, a Falcon? Or maybe just another hallway but with the Seguavian Death Gang and one of the not the Seguavian the uh, Kanji Club with Kanji Club? one Wrath Tar and Ray and Finn or something yeah, I don't know but who knows it, honestly and the, the price is ridiculous that should be a $50 set the other big one that they're releasing now which is kind of like a staple every year it's be, people I guess like it is the Avon calendar we don't necessarily collect those they're cute it's a way of getting extra figures yeah the, and little they tiny use, they usually come with one like exclusive figure right it's a figure but it's also a super micro not just the regular micro sets but the, the little tiny micro sets yeah. for every day you open up the you know you open up the thing and you you get yeah, a little this, treat yeah, i think the the exclusive figure with this one is just bb8 with a santa hat hey listen if you like it wonderful yoda's jedi starfighter now yeah this is this cool. is this is from clone wars it's yeah i was from, gonna say it's this... from it's from the lost missions it's from like yeah, the last episodes yeah. and yeah. it's kind of looks like the jedi starfighter the one that almost looks like the has the tie fighter looking cockpit but it's all green yeah, and... it is it's just it's yoda's version which is just smaller for because he's small it's custom yeah that's cute i mean again if that's what you like that's Interesting. I don't think either one of us are into that. Duel on Naboo. This is a Qui-Gon Obi-Wan versus a Darth Maul set. Yeah. They've never actually made that set before. Yeah. But I've heard like a lot of mixed reviews on it basically saying like, oh, it should be bigger. And I mean, it could be bigger, but at least I'm, I'm happy that it's a small price. And you can get those figures. Well, that's the thing. Good. It's just like the Yoda Starfighter. It's twenty four ninety nine. It's in, yeah, it's the good. mid price. It's the mid price. Yeah, I, I like that. That's a good deal for that set. And I like that. Now, they're also putting out a Bounty Hunter speeder bike set that, as far as we know, because of the picture they showed us, has Bosk, Dangar, and another... And IG-88. Bounty Hunter. IG-88, you think yeah, that's IG-88, it? Yeah, IG-88's in the background. And then there's the one that like that's there. It's like a all in black, and it has like yeah. a, one of those Death Star droid faces. It's supposed to be either Forlarm or Zuckus. I forget, because I read somewhere else that's supposed to be their Forlarm okay, well, or Well, for Zuckus. some reason, they weren't finished with the art, I guess. And even the display that they had, the pictures... It had the bike, but they had like temporary placeholder, yeah, the, ye like yellow figures or white figures just as a placeholder. Uh, that's a cheaper set. That's a $14 set. But you were saying you don't think, you think that's even too expensive? $14? Yeah, yeah they, they hiked up the price. It used to be 12 for those for those type oh, of sets. Well, fourteen ninety nine really. It's not that bad. When you think about the micro series that are usually nine ninety nine. you figure one notch above that would be an extra four bucks. Yeah. Yeah. There were extra four bucks. That would be 12, not... Well, it was it was either twelve to thirteen. Now they're making it yeah. fifteen. They hiked up the minifigure bags to a dollar. They're everything's getting hiked up. It's getting it's getting too expensive. Well, one cool looking one that again I'm not going to buy because it's too expensive, but it does look kind of cool is the Jakku quad jumper. That's the ship that blows up when Ray and Finn are going to run towards it, and yeah. then they end up going to the Falcon. It's, it's a cool set. Like it looks good. I'm not going to get it because. First of all, like, I mean, it's just a ship. It's not, like, something really, like, super significant. And also, the figures are all re-released figures. There's no new figures. I mean, it's a, it's a cheaper way to get Finn, because Finn is usually in the more expensive sets. And then also, the pilot of the quad jumper is just... There was an exclusive figure for one of the books, the DK books that yeah. they had, and they just repackaged that into the set, which yeah. is dumb. Like they should have just made a new figure for it. Is the the what's his name? Uh, the the boss, the the ugly guy. No, the, he's in a different set that came out. He doesn't last come year. with that. No, he was in a la he was in a set last year. Let's see what else we got here. The Phantom. Anyway, I don't know if I mentioned Jack Jakku Quadjumper, $49, forty nine ninety nine. Mm -hmm. That is not the highest, but it is up there. Yeah, it's it's, it's one of those high ones. The Phantom. This is the second Phantom 
because I already own yeah. a Phantom that has the floppy wings. This is the second one that doesn't have the yeah, floppy this is wings. The, has this, the fin on top. This is the season three version. Yeah. It comes with Admiral Thrawn and Kanan. Well, was yeah. am I wrong in assuming uh, this goes for twenty nine ninety nine? Is it possible that the original Phantom was twenty four ninety nine? Yeah, I, th- I think it was because the original Phantom was smaller. But this Phantom, it's really good because it's it, it actually does still connect with the Ghost. Like if you still oh, have the wow. Ghost set, you can still lo- put it, stick it in the back. I prefer fit. the one I have. I like the folding wings. I like that that much better still. Yeah. I really wish that they would like still sell the Phantom. They don't sell it anymore. Really? Because it was retired. Because it's it's like it's been out for like years now. Well, the next two ships that they're uh, putting out there are really surprising to me that the two most expensive sets are for a non-Star Wars-y type of thing, something yeah, off to the side. Are... And they're talking about the Freebuilders show, right? Yeah, the, the, the Freemakers. The Freemakers show. Two ships, the Tracker and the Arrowhead. The Tracker is $69.99 and the Arrowhead $89.99. These are very large ships yeah, for something that is not part of a movie or even Rebels. If no, you think it's about ju- it. it's just its own little like it's comedy little, show yeah, for it's Lego. Yeah, it's a Lego offshoot yeah. thing. Which it's, is- it's 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 like the show. It's 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 cute. It's it's nice, but like, geez, you don't need to. Like, I like seeing these new sets, but they should make smaller sets for them, not these huge yeah. sets. Yeah, nobody I mean, nobody's the, gonna buy these. And traditionally, the expensive big item of the year is something that is so iconic. That people want to buy. Yeah, like every hurt. time I see these these Freemaker sets from the last wave, because they had two Freemaker sets before, they were like 30 and 50. I've seen them on discount still. Like nobody's buying those. Yeah, I don't understand why Nobody... why, why they picked that as their flagship, you know, highest price point item. I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I, I honestly don't understand. Now we're going to go a little further down the, <laughs> the ladder of the, the stuff that's a little more affordable, at least for me. We have a first order transport speeder battle pack. The word battle pack is important here because there's a number of battle packs. This particular battle pack is one that comes with a speeder. It's not just a couple of figures. It's figures and something else to go yeah, along with. Yeah, they do one of those every year. They do like a set with like well, two. Well, this, this time we're going to get yeah. two at least. This this one is fourteen ninety nine, and this is the uh, first order. So you're going to get first order trooper looking guys and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you honey. get two regular first order stormtroopers and then one like officer and then one flamethrower right. trooper. Now, is this one one of the ones you're looking for? Um, Yeah, I'm, I want to get that later, but I think that one comes out in August. The other one I'm looking for comes out in March. With okay, the Death that troopers. one we're going to talk about in a minute. We'll also have a Darth Vader transformation set. Yeah, I want to get that too. Twenty four ninety nine. This is Darth Vader from Sith. Yeah, they recently like the, for the past like two years they've had a new Darth Vader mold for the head, and um, this is going to be like the cheapest way to get it now. So I'm I want to pick this up because it comes with Emperor, it comes with Vader, and it comes with it comes with some droids and stuff like the medical I had, droids. Yeah. I had the original two thousand five version of the set that came out which is a lot smaller, but this set looks like much more of an improvement. And it's also, it's only like, it's not even that much more expensive than this is 24 99, but the one you're talking about was a small, yeah, it was, small, like it, was it was like 10, 10, 12. Yeah. Okay. It was like the size of one of those battle packs before they started doing the, well, it was actually around the same time they started doing the battle packs up next Republic fighter tank. Was this, this is from clone wars. This wasn't Sith. No, but they're no. It's from Clone Wars. It's twenty four ninety nine. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's it's an unusual one to bring out now because people really yeah. They, Clone Wars they, is so in the yeah, past that, that's, right now. Yeah, that and that that set they've already released like in two thousand eight, no two thousand eight or two thousand nine with them when the movie came out. The Clone Wars movie yeah. came out. They've already made this. I guess it's a way of of giving something to every little bit of the franchise. You know, you're into the Clone yeah. Wars. Okay, here's a Clone Wars. Yeah, like I mean, I li- I love the Clone Wars. I I'm just, we've seen this set before. All right. Now, let me throw a couple of these micro sets, which are the ones that I've been kind of buying lately because they're more in my price range to the $9.99 large price range. Sometimes you see them on clearance for $7.99. Very few, and a few times I've been to Walmart and I've gotten lucky that they've had stuff on clearance that looks like people sat on some boxes or something or tried to chew a box or something. And they were super, super price reductions on them doesn't happen very often that you see that but we have a u-wing fighter from rogue one in the micro yeah, size which they've already put out a u-wing you know a super expensive u-wing when the movie yeah. first came out <laughs> we have a tie striker which to me looked really really ugly because it is so small that it almost has well, no detail they, they literally took the tie interceptor and they just took two wings off <laughs> that's all they did <laughs> hey 
$9.99. You can't complain for $9.99. Then you have the Y-Wing fighter, which I just got, which I absolutely love. It's a tiny little Y-Wing. I can't afford the real one, so I got to get the little one. It comes with a blue squadron pilot, which is cool. He's got the blue uniform. Krennix Imperial Shuttle, you know, that shuttle Tidarium looking thing with the black, it's all black. Yeah, it comes I with guess. like an officer, I think. Yeah, yeah. you get it's an officer, the pilot. It's another 999 ship. Now, going back to these battle packs that Kyle was talking about, we have a Rebel Trooper battle pack. Yeah, that's from Rogue One. Okay, now this is 1499. Yeah, it's four Rebels and a speeder. Okay. Then we have an Imperial Troop Battle Pack. Yeah, that's the one that I really want to get. Like, that's also 14. It, come, it comes with uh, two Stormtroopers and then two Death Troopers. And there, doesn't it come with some kind of building uh, yeah, or something? Yeah, it comes with a little uh, walker, a little walker. Oh, that's right, the walker. It has a walker. So, okay, so all these Battle Packs are a combination of figures and some small yeah, vehicle. They've, they've been doing these for years, since okay. like 2005. Like any time, they did it for Revenge of the Sith. They did a clone one and then they did a droid one and then they stopped after the movie came out and then when clone wars came back they started doing it again with clones versus droids then they did okay similar kind of things after that all right two more items a little on the expensive side one of them is the battle of scarif which is basically the beachhead and the part of that building they go into yeah the door this one's 49.99 it's a little expensive yeah, that's uh, not no that's i'm um, that's it's one of the like I I've noticed with some of the mid range sets and the large range sets they like to twist the price on them like there was another set that was basically just like this but for Force Awakens like last year or two ago where they did it was, was the, it the castle it was the castle Ma- but that castle. one was sixty and it had I and, I and it looks about the exact same size as this set which is they could have gone overboard with it like they did with that set i was i wanted to get that set so bad but like it's 60 bucks right. and it's but at least that set had it's a just lot a of, wall <laughs> but it had a lot of buildings and structures this one is a beachhead so it's well, no no it's it it's not even that it's literally like the same like the beachhead it has like a ground piece and yeah. then there's the door with the the mass canada thing it's just two walls that's it it's just two walls. Well, and then a bunch of figures. Again, this is one of the more expensive ones. It comes with a couple of figures. I think there's a Jen or so and a Cassian and I forget. I think some troopers, some beach troopers. They're yeah, like kind of orangey, troopers, orangey, yeah. yellowish troopers. Then the other big one for the year, again, not as expensive as the Rantar Escape or those ridiculous uh, tracker and arrowheads, Y-Wing Starfighter. This one is $59.99. It's a full version Y-Wing from Rogue One. Now, you told me they've already put out the Y-Wing a while back. Yeah, they've done it. They've done it like at least like four times if you want to include the Clone Wars version that they did. This one, I guess it has, because it's Rogue One, it has to have at least a couple of Rogue One characters in them. The pilot is probably one of those blue blue uniform pilots i imagine just like the little guy i got so they have to make it rogue one-ish in some shape or form but that is the majority of what we saw for lego they did have a sign referencing episode eight you know coming in the fall you know that's when they're on they'll i guess they'll start showing us what the episode eight stuff looks like because obviously when a movie comes out they don't want to show you anything (laughs) if a movie's already out they don't care Let's take a quick break now and listen to a little spot from our friends at IC Robots. If you're into anything having to do with retro, vintage toys and 80s shows and all kinds of 80s and 70s vintage retro kind of games, television, movies, all of that geek culture that we love here at GeekFest Rants, take a look. When you visit their site, they have a podcast called The Toys R Us Report, and we strongly recommend it. So have a listen. Tune in to the Toys R Us report for your weekly dose of pop culture talk that's out of this world. Movies, TV, toys, comics and more every Wednesday on the IC Robots radio network at icrobots.com. What are you waiting for? It's time to get down or come up. All right, we're back. Thank you guys from IC Robots. And let's continue with our show. So let's go back to Hasbro again to talk a little bit more about some other six inch and three quarter inch related stuff. The six inch line, which I mentioned earlier, which I think is the one they're really promoting the most, is going to have a couple of new characters. Some of them might already been out, might be out already. You can find them here or there. Some of them you won't see it for a few months. But for example, they're going to have the the Adat pilot or the Adat driver, really Krennic, which I think I've seen in the stores already. There's a Sabine coming out, which is a six-inch version of Sabine. Pretty nice. 
There's a very nice looking Lando from Empire that's coming. Hera from Rebels also. Uh, there's a Royal Guard coming out. Qui-Gon Jinn. It's like, wow, they're giving us some uh, Phantom Menace in six inch form. That's, that's interesting. Bays from Rogue One and Chirrut. They're getting their own six inch versions of those. And these are not the Disney ones that we've seen already. The Disney ones are completely different. They're metal heavy. You know, these are different. There's a Darth Raven, if you're into the EU part of Star Wars, which is really unusual because I remember not too long ago, they were saying that they were going to start stepping away from the EU, the non-canon material. Well, Rebels is not doing that at all. <laughs> They're just... No, no. But Rebels is closer to canon than Raven or... Well, yeah, but Raven in some capacity, is still canon. We just don't know exactly how. But it's more of what used to be the EU. I know now it's called Legends. Yeah. But it's more of what used to be the EU. There used to be more EU-ish type of stuff available. I mean, and, and yeah. they, they said they were going to cut back on the EU and concentrate a little more on films and television. You know? Yeah. Okay, great. Six Inch Snowtrooper and the X-Wing Luke that we talked about earlier. That's coming soon, too. One small line that is... Um, Something that I've been collecting lately is the titanium helmets. These are these small, I don't know, about two inch high helmets made out of metal and plastic. They started putting them out a few years ago. They're going to put out two more sets. One of them is the X-Wing Red 5 helmet with the traditional New Hope TIE Fighter pilot helmet. The other set is a Rogue One set, which is the Scarif Trooper and a Rogue One Rebel pilot helmet. Again, you got to see these if you want to really know what I'm talking about. They've only been out, I think, maybe two years. Because they only seem to put out maybe about two sets a year. Which is great. I love it when they put out stuff that is so limited that you don't have to go crazy chasing them around. You can wait a year. Okay, next year we'll get another two. And then you get another two. You know, that kind of thing. I like that. As part of the 40th anniversary, as we mentioned earlier with the early bird set... They're also going to introduce something called the Titanium Series or Block Series Action Pose line. And it's basically a series of figures that are unposable, really. And they stand on top of a base with a background. And you can then take all these figures, these are New Hope classic characters, in action poses with guns and blaze, you know, gunfire and lightsaber swishing, you know, and you can kind of connect them all next to each other to form a kind of like a display of all of these characters. Not really interested. At least it's not like they've done in the past the the crazy money grab new concept toy. I don't see these going beyond this year. I think they only make them because it's the anniversary year. And there's a lot of nostalgia about the original figures and that sort of thing. So I think that's what they're trying to capture is the the original figure feel. These little guys have a reversible poster behind them that you can reverse them. And I guess it's a, it's a display thing. It's not so much an action. It's definitely not an action figure. It's more of a display thing. Uh, now, speaking of display things, there's also something called the centerpiece line. They're kind of action post sets. Now, these are actual six-inch figures, you know, like Black Series type of figures. But they're going to come in a display area. For example, there's a Darth Vader display area where you have Darth Vader walking through the door of what looks like the Tantive Four, and there's like scorch marks all over from gunfire, and you can then add troopers around him and that sort of thing. So that's one of the different sets that they're coming up. The other one is one of Luke from Hoth in full snowspeeder outfit with his lightsaber drawn, stepping over what looks like to be an AT-AT foot that's been crushed or something. On his way to fighting with some snowtroopers or, you know, at at commanders or at at uh, drivers, that sort of thing. These are centerpiece. Like I said, it's called the centerpiece line. Doesn't interest me at all. I, I don't know if there's a future for these. Again, I'd rather see something like this than an entire new line like the Angry Birds or the or the, the little uh, army man that they were pushing yeah, they, very recently. They kind of already done a centerpiece already like last year for Force Awakens, but it was like as a Target exclusive where you get Rey and Kylo Ren and there's like, you get like a snow tree and like a little bit of a base for it. But I, I don't think that it's directly... Oh, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Those are, yeah, those were more... Yeah, and you can connect the two with the snow. Yeah, I remember yeah. what you thought. They were Kmart. 
was Kmart. It was Kmart. Kmart. They were Kmart oh, exclusives. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is way more than that. This is a bigger. It, it's more about the centerpiece. It's more about the connecting piece than the actual figures, it seems to me, at least. And going back to the ones we talked about before, these connectable ones with the action poses, they remind me a little bit of, if you remember the Unleashed. Remember the yeah. Unleash line where they were all in these extreme action poses? And yeah, they those were, like, were really cool. I wish they could bring those back. Those were like... Oh, my God. Those were awesome. Yeah, they were they were a little over the top in terms of how dramatic the poses were. Yeah, like, but it was still it was still really cool. Okay, let's go to three and three quarter because that's the stuff we really like. And unfortunately to me, it seems like that's the stuff we're getting the least these days. But with three and three quarter... Aside from the ones we talked about earlier, that that Walmart exclusive pack, that, that they are super articulated. It's fought part of a four pack, and I think they're just reissues. They're not new at all. That's why I guess they they don't mind because they already have the molds and they're already pre made probably. Now let's talk about the five point of articulation, three and three quarters. The, the what what seems to be more of the standard now. There's a two pack of what I, originally I called him the Space Monkey because that's what they called him a couple of years ago when they were first talking about him. His name is Captain Bistain or Bistan. And he's that Rogue One guy that is kind of shooting from the ship down with like a machine gun type of thing. And he's got this, he's not the guy with the giant mouth, lizardish guy with the giant mouth that already came out. He was part of a two pack. This guy is the other guy that looks like a space monkey. It's basically a, a giant monkey wearing a space outfit, yeah. like a, like an astronaut suit. And he was there for the uh, celebration last year. He was. Yeah, they, they brought him out. Well, they're putting him out as a two-pack. Unfortunately, then, you know, I want that one, so I'm going to have to get him as a two-pack. Let's see. They're going to put out, obviously, another Ray, another Phasma. They're doing them with extra guns or extra accessories. I hate that because that usually means that when they package it with extra crap, that's an excuse for them to take a five-point articulation figure and charge you yeah. 2 or $3 more which is the whole cheat of the five-point of articulation thing. Galen Erso in the Imperial uniform. That's a very, it's a nice looking figure that's coming out. Grand Admiral Throng, speaking of EU, he is now part of the regular Rebels canon, I guess. So they are going to put him out as a figure. No big surprise there. From Rebels, we're going to see Fen Ra? Fen Rao. Fen Rao, which we actually saw him a few minutes ago. We were watching uh, the episode of Rebels where he appears. There's apparently another Boba Fett they're going to put in three and three quarter with, again, another extra gun or blah, blah, blah. Junk, junk, junk. Bodhi. I'd like to see a Bodhi figure. Another Han Solo figure. It's like, really? Do we need more Han Solo figures? From Rogue One, Lieutenant Sefla. He's basically the kind of large black guy <laughs> that the rebels uh, bring out during the uh, the mission to Scarif. Yeah. They're making his own figure. That's cool when you actually see a different character that is not a ge- it's not like generic fighter. It's not guy with mustache. <laughs> no, this is a guy that was actually an actor, and you see his face, and it's like that's him. Oh wow, they're actually getting into that much detail. I love it when they do that. Admiral Raddus, which is the, uh, yeah, the Mon Cal blue guy. Yeah. Another great looking figure. I like him. He's pretty cool. But I'm still not part of my, you know, must have list. Uh, unfortunately, the ones that I do want, other than the Space Monkey, is part of a four pack, a Rogue One four pack that has Saw Guerrera, which is, it's like you're going to really throw him in a four pack. You know, he's an important character. You're going to make you make you buy a whole bunch I th- just... I thought they, they made him already as a separate figure, but I, I guess they have... I don't know, but they're throwing him in a four-pack with Jyn Erso. She's wearing like a special wrap around her head. I don't know if that's important. Now, here's the one I really want. I, I mean, Sogar I kind of like because I like the fact that he has the robotic foot. So he kind of looks like a little bit of a cyborg himself. and they, It's back to that whole theme of how some of these characters are becoming more machine than man. Everything goes back to the Vader... You know, you're Grievous. You know, all these characters that are little by little getting turned. Well, in this one, it's Saw Gerrera. He has the breathing apparatus. He has the prosthetic leg already. Anyway, one of his thugs, I don't know his name. I couldn't see it on the card because there was, it was blocked. But it's the guy that has the pointy head. He's got like a helmet and there's two of them. He's got a pointy thing going up and a pointy thing going to the right and a pointy thing going to the left. They're the ones that kidnap Bodhi in Rogue One. He's one I definitely want to get, and unfortunately, I do have to get him as part of this pack, which is not too bad because then I'll I'll be getting the uh, the Sogarera one. And there's another trooper from Rogue One, and you said it was the tank trooper. 
Yeah, the tank truck. The one with the slit in his eyes, yeah. the, 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 the long thing. So that is as far as we can go with three and three quarter, which not a lot. I mean, I remember three and three quarter used to be like 90%. When we talked action figures, it was 90% three and three quarter. Now it's maybe, maybe half. And maybe out of this list I just gave you, there's only maybe a quarter of what I just read to you is actually new. Not repackaged, not re not another version of a character that already exists. You know, how many more Finns do we need? How many more Han Solos do we need? How many more Boba Fett's do we need? I enjoy the brand new characters, you know, when, when, you know, when they're special anyway. Two quick items I want to mention before we wrap up here in the area of, I guess you can call it the role-playing area. One of them is they're putting out a Poe Dameron helmet. Which is now we we've been seeing this lately now that they're they're producing these black the, series helmets. The black yeah. series, yeah, the black series. They're they're life size. They're not crazy, you know, in the multi hundred dollar range. They're usually like what, like a hundred bucks, hundred and fifty bucks, or seventy dollars, yeah, like, a, like a, uh, between seventy and a hundred. Okay, yeah. and this is the Poe Dameron red pilot helmet, the one that kind of wraps around your cheeks a little bit. Very nice looking. I mean, especially if you're into if you're a little kid and you're you're trying to put together a costume. Man, these things are sharp. They look really good. The other thing they're putting out this year in the FX Saber line, which I love the FX Saber line, and I've been collecting them for a while. The last one I got was a Kylo Ren, which they put out around the time of Force Awakens. This year, unfortunately, they're putting out a, an Obi-Wan, a Ben Kenobi one. No big deal for me because I already own a previous one, but I guess what they're kind of doing in a way is they'll give you a brand new one and then they'll give you a recycled one, if you will. And that is what they've been doing lately is they've been reintroducing the ones that already exist and they just, the new thing about them is that they have removable blades. So Vader is out, removable blade Vader. There's a Luke that's out, I think. Removable blade Luke, I think it's the green one. And now they're giving you the blue blade Obi-Wan which has the removable blade. Okay, I get it. I don't, you know, based on my own personal rules on <laughs> the money issue and the redundancy issue, I don't need it because I already have a Obi-Wan that's blue. You light it up, it comes up blue. That's all I need, really. The hilt looks pretty much the same, but I think they also mentioned something about the, the like the electronics, I think might be a little different now. I think the, the motion sensing mechanism is a lot more accurate. You know, it makes, depending on how you move the hilt, it makes uh, certain noises react in different ways, which is cool. But, you know, how often do I really take these things out and, you know, run down the street with them at night? Kyle does that. I don't do that. <laughs> you know you do. I do. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter that much. If they were to introduce new ones, yes. And I will go over my list as I usually do, like a complaining old man. I don't see a Qui-Gon Jinn. I don't see an Ahsoka. I don't see Palpatine. Palpatine has the most beautiful hilt. You know, it's a gorgeous hilt. We don't see a lot of rebel stuff. We don't see... Kanan or... Kanan uh, or... Ezra. Ezra. And Ezra has two different ones. The, the one that looks like a staple gun and the one that looks just like a normal one. And uh, didn't Ahsoka at some point change to double to yeah, two different had, ones? Yeah, she had she started out with one and then she added a secondary sh Shoto Saber, which is right. like a shorter blade. So there are still many more to produce. I just don't understand why they don't go in that direction. I guess obviously it's, you know, you always have to go back to the well. You always have to go back to the iconic ones. But... I don't know, maybe they can take turns. You know, one year you do an iconic one, one year you do a another one that's people are waiting to, you know, to get. But I'm sure that their marketing department know more about what sells and what doesn't sell than you and I. So overall, what could I say? I'm glad, as usual, that there's not a lot of stuff that I want to get because then I could save a lot of money by not getting things. I'm glad there's a few things I want to get because there's still some interest in what's coming, you know. You got to keep in mind, we're getting a movie a year now. So there's just a ton of merchandise that's hitting us left and right. So we got to kind of take it easy and, and hit it as it comes. Uh, I'd like to mention, and again, I keep saying two, two little points, two quick little points. I just got for my birthday a Gentle Giant mini bust of the Macquarie Stormtrooper, which is really cool. And I've never had a, a Gentle Giant piece. And it's interesting how it comes with the multiple detachable limbs for different for holding different things and different heads even even it even comes with different head and what's cool about it is that one of these heads 
that I, you know, I put on the head that, that, that came with it. And there's another head with a different design, you know, a different concept design for the helmet of the Stormtrooper. I have it here on the side here, and I'm going to use it as one of my titanium heads because they're never going to manufacture this. But it's almost exactly the same size and weight. So I'm just got to figure out how to be able to mount it on something and add it to my display. The other thing I wanted to mention is that recently, within the last week or so, not only have they announced the name of the next Star Wars film, which was maybe a little more than two weeks ago, The Last Jedi and The Last Jedi. But about a week ago, news came that when they started putting that name out for the foreign market, the translation of The Last Jedi implies something that you don't ne necessarily see when you read it in English. And that is that The Last Jedi in English works as a singular or plural. In Spanish, and I think in French, and even in Italian, I think, when you translate that word, it's plural. So... The implication is that the last Jedi, the word Jedi is plural, meaning it doesn't mean there is one Jedi left, is that there are multiple Jedi that are considered to be the last Jedi. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's something to do, with, if you know different languages, you'll understand the whole thing about singular and plurals, that this is a little trick. I don't know if they did it on purpose because they knew that in English you could confuse people into thinking one thing and then realizing another thing. But when you translate it, you are kind of giving away a little bit of a spoiler, if you will, maybe. But it's in the title, so how can you get away from spoiling something if it's in the title of the movie? So it's a silly little point to keep in mind. But that, I think, wraps it up for today. Like I mentioned earlier, we have Celebration coming up. We have Comic-Con coming up. And then we have the crazy holiday season, which is going to give us yet another movie. I believe Rogue One is going to probably hit DVD market in another month. So we'll get a Blu-ray of that. And I'm sure around Christmas time, we'll get a 3D Blu-ray. Because that seems to be the pattern that these guys are, are doing. The, the, the regular and then the 3D. So I'm sure we'll have more Star Wars goodness for you guys. I want to thank Kyle for joining me today. Thank you, Kyle. You're welcome. And you guys for listening. And we will see you here soon at Geek Fest Rants. Bye-bye, everybody. If this is a consular ship, where is the ambassador? Thank you. New Lego Star Wars Rogue One sets. The Empire is taking over the galaxy. You can build the Rebel U-Wing fighter to stop them. Load the troops and soar into battle. Great shot. Look out for Krennic's Imperial shuttle. A direct hit. You can build and test these vehicles inside the Lego Force Build Trap. Ask your parents first. New Lego Star Wars Rogue One sets. Each sold separately. Literally, other than the space monkey.